Welcome. We're going to be learning all about algebraic expressions today. This is 3-5 and the 3-5 lessons over algebraic expressions on Envision 2.0. So let's get started. My name is Jason Jacobs. Welcome. A bike shop charges by the hour to rent a bike. Related items are rented for flat fees. Write an expression that represents how much it would cost to rent a bike and a helmet for H hours. So we're going to do it with H hours first. That's the algebraic expression. How much would it cost to rent the bike and the helmet for three hours? And then we're going to evaluate it by substituting that three in, guys. Solve this problem any way you choose, but we're going to get right to the point. Right to the point. All right, here we go. So notice here, the bike costs twelve fifty per hour, and the helmet is five twenty five. All right. So what that's going to look like is twelve fifty per hour. So this, when the variable is when the variable is right next to the number, that means multiply. Okay. So twelve fifty times h is what that means. There, guys. Twelve fifty times h plus the flat fee. So the flat fee is what we'll call a constant, and that's the helmet is 525, just a quantity there. All right, you'll notice this is the sum of two terms. Terms, now this is important from 3-4. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So this is one term, and this is two terms. And this is the sum of two terms it's separated by addition in this case. Here's an example of something where students miss it a lot. This right here is the sum of two terms. This is a term and that's a term because it's separated by addition and subtraction. Do you see that? That's from 3-4 in case you missed that. So now let's get back to the algebraic expression here. We're going to label this. Now your math literacy is very important. So here we go. Label this in your book. This right here, the 1250 next to the variable, that's called the coefficient. So write that in. And then the H right here, guys, that's called the variable. It represents a unknown number, a letter or symbol that represents an unknown number. And the 525 without any variable attached to it, that's called a constant. And you'll have to know all these vocab terms. Okay, you labeled that. Now I'm going to switch colors for clarity purposes and we're going to solve it. So listen, guys, the whole goal of this lesson is you have an algebraic expression and you're going to substitute the value in and make it a numerical expression and then solve it just like we did in 3 3, 3 3. So we're going to write 1250. Now we're going to substitute the 3 in. It's called substitution. Substitute that variable in the, the three, what we're defining the variable as, and then plus 525. Now we just follow the order of operations as we learned in 3.3. So 37.5 plus 5.25. Oh, can I squeeze it in? I can. And then you get uh, 42.75 is your answer. All right. Let's go on to the next part. How can you evaluate an algebraic expression? Let's find out. Eric collects miniature cars. He has one large case that has 20 cars. He also has three same size, smaller cases filled with cars. Let N equal the number of cars in each smaller case. Remember, a variable can represent an unknown number or any number in a set of data. Then the expression 20 plus 3N represents the total number of... So here the 20 is the constant. This is the sum of two terms. The three is the coefficient and n is the variable. Cars that Eric has. How many miniature cars does Eric have if each smaller case holds 10 cars, 12 cars, 
14 cars. Let's look at the expression. 20 represents the number of cars in the large case. 3n represents the number of cars in the smaller cases. What do you need to do? Evaluate 20 plus 3n when n equals 10, 12, or 14. To evaluate an algebraic expression, use substitution to replace the variable with a number. Substitute 10 for n. 20 plus 3 times 10. Why do you multiply 3 by 10 before you add 20? The order of operations says to multiply first. 20 plus 30 equals 50. If each smaller case holds 10 cars, Eric has 50 cars. Now substitute 12 for n. So you can see we're uh, substituting different values in. First we did 10, then we're going to do 12. We're going to substitute 12 in, and then we're going to do, I, I think, 14. But that's to get different um, values, and then later on we'll, we'll graph those values. 20 plus 3 times 12. 20 plus 36 equals 56. If each smaller case holds 12 cars, Eric has 56 cars. And finally, substitute 14 for n. 20 plus 3 times 14. 20 plus 42 equals 62. If each smaller case holds 14 cars, Eric has 62 cars. Each evaluation of the expression is the same because 3 is multiplied by a number and then 20 is added to that product. How is each evaluation of the expression different? The value substituted for the variable changes, so 3 is multiplied by a different number each time. The table summarizes the values of 20 plus 3n for each number of cars. Do you know what the numbers in the second column represent? The values of the expression when n equals... All right, so now we have our own table right here, and it says... Evaluate the expression 50 minus t when t equals 10, 20, or 25. Then complete the table to show the values. So we're going to take 10, and we're going to substitute it in here. So we go... Step one is to go algebraic into numerical. So take the time in your math notebook to do that. And then this will be 40. So then this is 40 here. And now we're going to substitute the 20 in. So substitute the 20 in. And you get 30. Now substitute the 25 in. And it just so happens to be 25 as well. All right, so here we have an algebraic expression, and you will see that A equals 10. So the first step that you'll have to do, you'll, you'll get a, like a lot of problems like this, is we're going to substitute 10 in for A. And it's coefficient variable, so that means multiply. So you're going to go 3.4 plus 12 times 10 divided by 4. So now this should look familiar. This is just the order of operations. And you're allowed to use a calculator, but you still have to show all the um, equivalent expressions going down as you simplify it down. So uh, you still have to show your work and do the steps. You can't just plug this in the calculator and get it. So order of operations, parentheses first, then exponents, then uh, multiplication or division from left to right. Here in this case, it's there. So now you rewrite everything. This you have to do. You don't really need a calculator for that part. And then we go into the division. And then finally, 33.4. Hey, don't make the mistake of adding incorrectly. You've got to add the decimal here like that. That's how you get it. Um, some kids in class did this, which is wrong. Don't do that. That would be wrong. You got to line up the place values and the decimals, right? 
All right, let's move on. Example three. Here we're tiling floor. This reminds me of when we redid our bathroom. So 27 square, well, we'll read it for completion's sake. Mr. Grant wants to tile a 27 square foot area with square tiles. Let S equal the side length in feet of a square tile. Use the expression 27 divided by S squared to find the number of tiles Mr. Grant needs to buy. Okay, so step number one, algebraic expression, we insert the what the variable equals, which is one third. It's called substitute one third for s. Now remember, one third squared is one third times one third, not one third times two. It's one third times one third. That's one ninth. So now you have 27 divided by one ninth. Now you do LMR, left side leave it, middle multiply, right side reciprocate. Remember the reciprocal? and you get 243. So Mr. Grant needs to buy 243 tiles. We're gonna do one and we're gonna switch it up. It's still 27, but we're gonna insert three fourths in. So it's gonna look like this. 27 square feet, um, was it divided? Yeah, divided by three fourths squared. Now, you have to put parentheses around the three fourths. If you don't put parentheses around the Three fourths, you might get confused. That might look like three squared over four. That's why you put parentheses over. And remember, three fourths uh, squared is three fourths times three fourths. Now that equals nine sixteenths. Okay? So now we have 27 divided by nine sixteenths. It's 27 over one. Now we have to do LMR. Left side, leave it. The dividend stays the same. And then you multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Left side, left side, leave it. Middle multiply, right side, reciprocate. And now you will notice that you can cross cancel. What is the greatest common factor of 27 and 9? That's right, 9. So divide by 9 and divide by 9. And now you get 3 times 16 is 48 over 1. So just uh, 48 tiles. Okay. And there you have it. That is our lesson for uh, 3-5. Thank you so much. Good w best wishes to you at home. Bye.